What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five with my man, Eric Sheetaber. We're going to talk a little NBA showdown. A um, little, uh, just great stuff from the from the Hawks battling through the Trey injury last night. And hopefully Giannis is okay. Uh, obviously, that game played very differently. And we've seen that. And, and I'm going to sort of segue into tonight. It's pretty consistent in the NBA. It happens, especially like during the regular season. You'll see the best players sit. And then all of a sudden, everybody steps up and the energy changes and all that. It's happened more in this playoffs than I can ever remember it happening before. And there's no better example than the team playing tonight in the Clippers. Without Kawhi Leonard, they have been, the, the, the energy is different on their team. They look like a different team. And in fact, I mean, you could really argue that they could have won the series already, or they probably should have won the series already. Uh, they played terrific. And I think they've been the better team every night, pretty much against Phoenix, with the exception of game one. Um, really, with the exception of game one, I felt like in watching the games, they looked like the better team to me that just, either made a mental lapse down the stretch or missed some free throws. Um, you know, it's basketball. They, I guess you can't say they deserve to win all of them, but they, they've been right there. Um, and they've, you know, they, they've got a, they've got a, it's been different guys, you know, outside of the Paul George stuff. And we, we have a major question mark with, with Zubac tonight. I actually think even if Zubac plays, you're going to see them go small again, because it certainly worked in the last game and it certainly worked in the last series. They seem how they somehow managed to, uh, Take eight and out of his out of the game. He only had nine shot attempts. So I uh, just wanted to mention that I I like the Clippers tonight. I feel nervous every time I say it because I still thought Phoenix was going to win this series. Uh, I thought the Clippers would win the series if Kawhi was healthy. After he was out and they were down two nothing, I thought they would fight, but I didn't think that it would be this uh, this good of a fight. I like the Clippers again tonight. Um, that's where I'm at. How about you? So. Bobby is one who believes in streaks and believes that, you know, the go with the hot hand in, in, in a lot of things in, in sports and life. And, and, and if, if you believe that that's the case, my son likes the Clippers tonight and, and he's, and he's done everything right the last couple of days. So um, I'll, I'm with you, man. I'll, I'll go with the Clippers. It sounds, sounds right to me. I honestly have not, I really don't have much of an opinion on the game. Um, one of yes, yesterday I was pretty, it was it was kind of a weird weird game. I, I was I was pretty confident you were supposed to take the Hawks, and then when Trey got ruled out, basically everything was was up was was up in smoke. And then when Giannis got injured, whatever, and that was a wild game. But um, um, yes, I do think that Zubac being out or not is is has definitely a lot of fantasy uh, fantasy uh, implications. Uh, for example, I mean, I my my first look, we can get right into it. I mean, I. I Presuming him out, I'm putting just like I have Batum and Marcus Morris both in the captain in in a lot of different lineups. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a very very key piece of whether he's in or out. What what do you do about 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 Boogie Cousins if he's out? I don't know that we do anything. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, like I don't I, you know you look you look in the last they his minutes are a little bit funky because look he he can put up tons in in no time. That's the one thing. This guy is literally the best fantasy point per minute producer if we've ever seen you know what I mean even the game he played seven seconds he put up a fantasy point you know what I mean right. he was just in there to try and get an offensive rebound on a ton of free throw um I I personally I'm I'm not touching the boogie cousins thing at his price I will tell you that I've been tracking this for a while and Terrence Mann at Staples Center is a thing um really absolute monster when they play there even when he's not actually putting up all the, the the massive numbers i mean look at his production in this series it's basically it's almost triple um or no it's double it's double at home what it's been on the road so i i love terrence man if there's no zubac and i love terrence man if there is a zubac um i think he gets a lot out of it a lot of the crowd and the energy to the there aren't there aren't really clippers fans in the real world um i don't think that really exists but i think other people think it exists <laughs> Um, but I think that there are fans, I mean, they have fans, don't get me wrong, but they, the, the real, the real thing they've, that I've been impressed with, with, uh, it's just how much energy they've had here, but I think it has a lot more to do with the, the masks coming off and people feeling like they can live their lives again than it does the Clippers. Um, you have a lot of ways you can go with the Clippers. It's weird to have a showdown slate where you have so much, I mean, you have real variance here because Luke Kennard can get hot in a, in a certain game scenario and he's 1800 or whatever. Um, right. You've got uh, Patrick Beverly, who's going to get the minutes. And somehow I just feel like he's waiting for an ejection waiting to happen. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, we, you know, he got, he got maybe the worst flagrant foul called on him in the last game that, that you've seen in the whole playoffs. Chris Paul literally just stepped in front of him on one of those dri dribbling up court plays and then sort of flailed. And I don't know how the refs in history called that a flagrant foul. <laughs> um, but 
the, the, that's the thing that's interesting about it. There's a lot of uh, spread out ownership. Terrence Mann is the, is going. Oh, to be you sure? Are you sure about that one? A hundred percent sure. I, I mean, literally everybody, it's all anybody in the NBA circles are talking about is just how ridiculous that call specifically was. Okay. It's ridiculous. I look in general, I'm not a, I'm a guy who thinks Patrick Beverly, this guy took out Westbrook's knee, you know, he's, he started this right. guy, my, my guy's downfall uh, or not downfall, but you know, struggling or whatever. Um, I think Terrence Mann is a very, very, very good play tonight. And he's going to be low owned. I'm happy to get a, as much of that as I possibly can. Is it true that Nicholas Batum is going to be low owned? And if so, no, there's no way, right? We're just basing that on recent production because that seems like a really uh, a mis- I mean, I guess you can't play everybody, and that's sort of where, where it gets to be. You know, some of these guys have to be low owned. Marcus Morris, uh, I agree with you that, but even if even if uh, if Zubac plays, I, I I still like Morris here. Um, and I, again, I think they're going to go more with that smaller lineup. So all these guys are going to have their chances. I think the energy that Man plays with keeps him on the court, unless Luke Kennard gets really really hot and they need it. That's the that's the, the flip side of it. Um, I'm a little frustrated that man won't shoot the ball when he's wide open. And I think the Clippers actually get frustrated by it too, because they get these wide open looks to him every time because they all lean towards Paul George and everybody's crashing out. I, I don't understand why he won't shoot more, but man is the guy I'm going with uh, as my most contrarian, which is not that contrarian, but uh, man, Batum, Morris. And obviously I don't think we should be fading Paul George here. Although if you did, you, you know, look, Giannis, I, I cursed him yesterday by saying the only way he can't get there is an injury. And of course he goes out and gets injured. Um, I don't really know how you fade Paul George and the, and the raw points here. And you what, don't, you I, can't, you, I don't think you can. I'm just trying to think out loud because, you know, we just trying to get anything. You're right though. I, I don't think it's possible. Um, oddly, he's the only clipper I have projected at above 50% ownership, which is actually possible because, you know, we, we Beverly Morris, Kennard, uh, Jackson, man, all of these guys are great plays like or, or have the chance to be great plays um i love i love what reggie jackson's doing i think it's for real uh he's the number one iso rated player in the nba this year which is still mind-boggling to me yep um but he's been terrific in this series and he's willing to take to step up when they need him to the only thing i'd say is that his current price again you want the raw points but i think you can get there i think there's a reasonable enough chance that that morris and uh, beverly and Jackson and man, I'm sorry, man and can or canard can make up enough of the difference where maybe he's in the 30 point fantasy point range. And maybe those guys can be in that range as well. That's my argument for fading Jackson. Who's going to be the second highest on flipper for good reason. But I think you have to try and get a little different. So I'm going with the man, George, um, mixing uh, man, George Morris and Batum. Actually, I think it, you, all four of those are, are the ones that stand out the most. And then you mix in some Beverly, and I do think you want to maybe mix in a little canard just for the upside. I mean, if they, if they get down, you know, 20 to two and he comes off the bench, there makes a three, he's going to be in the game for a while. I think they're going to, they're going to roll with the hot hand a little bit um, in that situation. Although the truth is I don't see that happening because they've looked like the better team. What about the Phoenix side for you? We want to start it off and talk a little bit about anybody who would uh, consider fading or who were, who were going to play with those uh, with the Clipper value. Yeah. I mean, Booker and Paul. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I again, I'm, I'm, Booker and I'm Paul or is it Aiton? Is it Aiton and Booker? That's what I'm um, trying to between. I don't know, man. I think I think there's I think these both those guys just have the ball too often in these closeout. I mean, this is still a closeout, whatever it is. I mean, I just think Paul's just gonna have the ball just too often. He's been uh I'll say I'll say he's not not been great uh since he came back from the COVID. Um and in real life basketball, he has been inefficient. He's shot the ball terribly. Uh, he just hasn't looked like the same person. He still, like you said, is going to have the ball a ton here. Uh, I don't think you can fade. I don't, I don't think I would be fading Booker in this game. I do think you can fade Chris Paul. I think Aiton is actually the priority play for me, though. Um, again, they're all, it doesn't, if I'm going to captain one of them, it's probably going to be Aiton or Booker. Uh, Booker and Booker and Paul make the most sense in a lot of ways to people. I think Aiton will have less ownership on, in the captain spot. I think he's actually has a higher ceiling probably than Chris Paul does. I mean, he's actually in a series, he's, he's proved it. Um, yeah. And I think they make a, I think what Chris Paul does is he makes a concerted effort. That's been their biggest advantage um, through a lot of these playoffs. And I think that why wouldn't they go back to that? Chris Paul is not the guy who's going to go out there. So, I, so I'm leaning towards fading Paul tonight, playing Booker and Aiton. Um, I also think that I'll, I mean, look, if I'm playing multiple lineups, I'm going to have some Chris Paul, but uh, you know, you do have Chris Paul also trying to close out at, in LA 
there's there's a there's a nice little narrative thing going on there but i just don't think he looks quite the same i think he's gonna gonna you know try to try to help the other guys take over but i don't think he's gonna be the one doing all the all the work himself and i think you can fade just the other guys i, I would rather it's safer to play crowder and johnson because we don't know which of the clippers are going to end up getting all the run they can't play all seven of those guys equal minutes but um but i do think that uh i think i'm going to try and fade the crowder booker uh crowder johnson situation in favor of the clippers and just just play the studs over here uh, yeah, I, I agree. With that. You know, that's that's the one thing I was going to say. You know, remember, it's it's uh, any any fade is is uh, even like a low on guys, like thirty five percent, right? So so if you play like a zero of like a Crowder, for example, I mean, you're kind of ahead of it if he does if he does poorly. Um, and he was he was he was uh he was struggling on defense. He was getting beat. I mean, like I don't know, but. It's, it, it's like I've been saying with these showdown slates, and I'm telling you, every, every slate of mine has been the same. I mean, like, as, in, unless, like, the whole the world blows up, you know, like, where it's multiple injuries and a blowout, which really hasn't happened in the playoffs. I mean, we really haven't. Well, haven't it's lived, happened. No, I know. I know. And we had the, those, those – just aside from those, those, those outlier games, right? Right, 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 right. Sorry. You know, um, I, I just – I'll just uh, – I'll I'll just I'll just go with Paul Booker and, and and Paul George and then just hope hope to hope hope the shuffle hope shuffle hope the shuffle works out with for the best. What I will do, as I mentioned before, is put guys like Morris in the captain, guys like uh, Batum in the captain, you know, just in case they have a good game and the rest of the lineup, I can get everybody else in there. Um, that that's something I would do, but I'm not going to do something like fade George or anything like that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting in the Booker thing. I mean, first of all, I, I, Patrick Beverly, say what you will about him. He's done a fin, like a phenomenal job yeah. on, on, on Devin Booker. Like yeah. people thought he couldn't defend anymore. Wrong. You know what I mean? The guy, the guy has been awesome. Um, it's interesting that, that, you know, skip game one and who has scored the most fantasy points for, for this team is, is DeAndre Ayton. And I just keep going yeah. back to that as maybe my captain play. Yeah. Um, Especially, you know, knowing Chris Paul and the way he thinks that that knowing, I, I feel they feel like he's their biggest advantage in this series. Yeah, and that he's it's, so. I so I kind of like the eight and captain idea. Um, yeah, with no with, with with no Zubac for sure, right? Yeah, but even even with Zubac, he put up the sixty one in that one game. Um, so I, I think that's kind of that's kind of where I'd be leaning. And uh, the Bridges and and Crowder, while there definitely is plenty of reasons you could argue to play them, I'll, I'll just say that Crowder has only reached fan twenty fantasy points once in this in this series so far. Um, Bridges at 6,600 has only reached 30 fantasy points once and it was exactly 30.25 so we barely got there yeah. so I would lean towards playing the Clipper guys leaving some money on the table embracing some of the variants and playing playing a combination of I, I'm starting to think more about it and, and leaning maybe I would go Paul and Aiton it's really close between Booker and Paul for me but I think I'm going Aiton no matter what and I think he's probably going to be my main captain tonight so yeah. it, you know, good luck to everybody out there. It's obviously hard to get different on these slates. Keep an eye out for what happens with Zubac. Um, by the way, you know, if Zubac plays, I do think they probably go small still. And the weird part is that they, they played well and he played extremely well in the games where, like, he was playing well when, when even though they lost that one game. Um, double double machine and really has done a good job with Aiden, but they did just win without him. So I'm, I'm sort of struggling with that one. So we'll, we'll have to see what happens with Zubac. But I, I think you're going to end up leaving – for me, I'm going to end up leaving some money on the table, maybe captaining Aiton um, and Paul George exclusively, and uh, and then mixing in the Clippers guys with leaving the – I mean, the, the, the reality is is that is that for Phoenix, the, the I, I would say – I can't put 90%, but almost all the points are going to come from Booker, Paul, and Aiton, right? And, and, and on the, the Clipper side – I'm just talking about the raw point, the, 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 like the points in the game, you know, how many points you score. And then um, most of the Clipper ones are going to come from Paul George. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's um, – yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's really hard to see that Paul George doesn't get there. And if you could find a way to fade him, congrats to you. I don't think it's possible. I really – But the reason I bring it up is, is – is so I, I put, like, those four guys, like, in this lineup right here. Mm -hmm. I put Booker pull, in the pull, 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 up your, pull up your screen while, while you show Oh, sorry about that. No problem. So – Oh wait, wrong look. Um, so I just put Booker in the captain here, just 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 to see what would happen. Um, and you know, 
I don't have to tell you like which guys are under 2K or whatever. So it's probably going to be difficult to, to make it this work. But all you got to do, like you said, Bobby, if you put Aiton in the captain yep. instead of Booker, for example, I mean, you can play the four guys. I mean, like that. And by the way, that's probably like a genius cat. I mean, that's like probably an unfatable cash game build. You know what I mean? When you think about it. Right, right, right. Um, and um, so you can, you can do stuff. I mean, I, I don't think you can take it down this way, but, but, but you can certainly, you know, certainly be in the money. <laughs> Absolutely. And, but it, I mean, the weird thing about the, especially if Zubach is out, but the weird thing about the Morris versus uh, taking, skip, skipping Crowder and skipping Bridges, if you're going to play multiple lineups and just treating Morris and Terrence Mann as they have the same ceiling or higher, that's the way I would approach this. Because I think that is the actual case. And you don't need those sure points from those. You know, you know let's talk about this a little more because you, in, in, my, in my simplification of the situation here, I left out one guy who I think could be either the, the, the captain or the fade. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that, and that is a guy you brought, you brought up before and that's Reggie Jackson, right? So he's a guy that I just, you know, I oversimplified this at Paul George. I keep forgetting Reggie Jackson has been freaking amazing. Right. Yep. So, so the question is maybe Reggie, the Reggie Jackson decision might be the decision, whether either to, to captain him or fade him completely. Right. Um, maybe, maybe that, maybe that, 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 that's, that's, an, that, that could be a decision that you can make. Um, I think that's a legitimate decision and I'm leaning towards the fade only yeah. because of my uh, hoping he misses shots or this. And the weird part is I, like, I, I, I want to see another, it's, I, I'm not a Clipper person. I'm, not, I'm the opposite of a Clipper fan, but I kind of am finding myself in these games. Like you can't control what you kind of want sometimes. And you're, I just find myself sort of pulling for them in this series, but mostly it's because everybody wrote all these guys off and there's been so much crap talked about them for so long, especially around my circles. Um, you know, people hating the Clippers and all, but I, I just, I love Reggie Jackson. I think he probably has another good game tonight, but I just think from a, from a strategy standpoint, I'm probably leaning more towards the fader, like you said, fader captain, but I think that I would probably just yeah. rather play Aiton at captain at that point, because even yeah. when he's been great, he's not been 60 fantasy points. Great. Which Aiton has in his bag. And that is in my opinion, what the clip, what Phoenix is should and will do because Chris Paul is a genius and will not, you know, he'll put them in the best position to win. He doesn't need to, to be the one who does it. Um, and you know, maybe that maybe that's where you where you start with dating one of Booker or Paul and and Reggie Jackson, and I think that, that at least gives you a little bit of a chance to be different. That's for me what I'm. I'll, I'll tell you, man. I was gonna just when you said, oh, you want you want to do a recording or whatever. I was saying, yeah, whatever. Uh, I'm kind I'm kind of into this a little bit today. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm gonna I think I'm I'm gonna play this um, this this slate. I, I'm just gonna play it anyway. Yeah, but I was gonna I was gonna get lazy. I was just gonna say I'm gonna put my, upload my projection to Sabres and do whatever. Just like just let it roll and just like have fun. I think I'm gonna create some lineups here. Um, and um, yeah, I think it's it is interesting. We could touch on it again later when we find hopefully know more about Zubac. But I think it's really like this is the mo the best chance you have to maybe get a little bit different we've had in a little while because not just because the injury or anything like that, but because of the uh, there's a lot of really really good plays that make sense and. I have a strong take on how the game will go. And I think the eight net captain is the most logical thing I can, I can think of doing. And this is the problem with, 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 with Matt's approach tonight. And he's going to, he's, I'm telling you, he's playing like the same thing he did. I think he's going to be playing for some Clippers blowout thing. I think Zubac being out, I think, I think that if, if Zubac is out, I think the advantage, honestly, I think the advantage Aiton has under the boards and, you know, at that, that position, makes makes a clipper blowout very unlikely you know what i mean like he's i think i think phoenix is like forced to be in the game um regardless of how well the clippers play yeah i think it's very hard for the clippers to, to blow them out here which is unfortunate for the clippers because that's they've won the blowout games and they've lost the close ones in the series right um i also think I, you know i realize i think i'm partly biased towards the clippers a little bit because i think they won me more money than anybody else this year i'm so familiar with their team because right. whenever they're always resting, you know, they were always resting Kawhi. And then they had even the Paul George out and then the Baca was in and out and the Zubach was in and out. Like there was so much happening with them shuffling the season that I, I tended to get a lot of the, the values and stuff right at different times. And I was playing Terrence Mann before people knew who he was. Not to right. say that, that it's a great thing, but I feel so familiar with their team. I think I might have to get a little heavier on my entries tonight. All right, guys. Um, good luck to everyone out there. Uh, we'll be with you at 6 Eastern and uh, let's crush it. All right. Good luck, everybody. Good luck, everybody.